Hey everyone, it's Jacqueline at Pixie Dust PhD. My partner and I are staying for three nights at the Hilton Grand Vacations Club SeaWorld. We were assigned room 8601, that's in the Warwick building. It is a one bedroom, come take a look. Here is the general shape of the Warwick building. We are in this room. I will say we're next to the trash room, but haven't really heard any noise from that, so no big deal. One notable downside probably for some people is that it is going to be outside entry. So now we're in the outdoor world. You are covered, but it's not fully contained. It's kind of, you know, more motel style in that sense. And yeah, here's the trash room. Something I really like is they have these magnets for do not disturb. So you can put it anywhere in your door. How great is that? So you've got your standard hotel door. We do have air coming out. I have turned it off for the audio on the video, but the air is working very well. Got a nice little piece of artwork. Here on the other side, when you step into the door, we've got a few doors. This is utilities, I assume. Here you do have a small, like apartment size stacked washer dryer. They did also give us a couple things of laundry detergent, which I thought was quite nice and thoughtful. Now this door is your bathroom. It's pretty spacious. We got dual sinks which is amazing. There is a makeup mirror. It is powered, so you can light it. Then this huge mirror is also powered. There's a light around the outside. Plenty of storage space. This is where the spare toilet paper and tissues were. Here we've got the hair dryer. These two drawers are just empty for guest use. and the plunger lives down here. We are on the top floor of this building. It is only the sixth floor, but the water pressure is fantastic. The temperature has also been really great. We've got this interesting sort of open concept shower, but it works really well. There's one little shelf, here's the shower, and then you get Crabtree and Evelyn conditioner shampoo and body gel. Here's your toilet. We were given two full sets of towels. There is also a wall-mounted Crabtree and Evelyn body lotion here. Depending on your length of stay, you may not get housekeeping. So we're only here three nights, so we don't automatically get housekeeping. But they said if we needed new towels or really anything just to call or text, let the front desk know, and they would take care of it. All right, moving back out to the main space then. Here's your front door. And now we have a whole kitchen. And it really is quite impressive. There's a decent amount of counter space. This sink feels huge, like it's so wide if you ask me. Trash underneath the sink. Unfortunately, I don't think there is recycling here, but so be it. Here's some extra little things, extra trash bags, paper towels, dish soap, detergent for the dishwasher, a little sponge. Got a coffee maker and lots of coffee supplies. This cabinet is open so you could store whatever kind of provisions you buy here. Just a very large cutting board. And here we have a colander and some glass bowls. Then you do have your full oven range microwave. Nothing up here. So again, you could store stuff there your knife block, toaster, kettle or hot pot, and ice bucket. And then for at least a vacation, I think just about everything you could want. There's coffee mugs, bowls. We used a couple bowls and a plate, so you'll see some missing. Small plates, larger plates. Pitcher, I guess these are like water glasses, a measuring cup in case you're really getting fancy. And then some more glassware, we've got shorter glasses, taller glasses, and most importantly, wine glasses. Here you've got silverware, as well as a half teaspoon, one teaspoon, and tablespoon measurement. Bevy of tools, so can opener, wine bottle opener, vegetable peeler, tongs, ice cream scoop, and pizza cutter. This one's kind of your larger utensil, so spatula, spoon, slotted spoon. 
here you've got some glass bakeware. Here are your pots and pans, so kind of a standard size, I don't know, maybe four or five quart pot and then a larger pot for something like pasta. What looks like probably a nonstick skillet and then a smaller sauce pot. And the fridge is like probably bigger than my fridge in my apartment at home. We just have drinks in here, but you could store quite a lot. And a proper freezer that also has an ice maker. Hallelujah. So yeah, you have a fully functioning kitchen. And frankly, I think it's quite well equipped for what you would need. We've just stored our snacks out on the counter because we're lazy. Moving into the main space then here on the left is a closet. This is also where your extra bedding is. And then they provided a broom and a dustpan as well as, you know, the standard ironing board and iron. This is your air control. The glare is very bad, but it works really well. Again, I have it set to off right now, but you know, the up down temperature, very simple and easy. Here is your dining table, comfortably seats for, you could seat more though you don't have the chairs for it. Look at these fancy chairs. Very nice. And I love this light fixture. Oh, also the light in the kitchen is really cool. Very fun pattern. You've got this piece of artwork in your dining room. And then we move into the living room area. We have taken over this little side table to be our charging station. So there is one plug here on this lamp. We've just got all of our various things coming out of a bigger power bank adapter. You know, it's got multiple outlets and USB slots. Then this huge couch, probably twice as big as the couch I have at home. Another piece of artwork, a big lamp, which is great. There is no overhead light in here, so that lamp is pretty important at night. Another side table. Here's your coffee table. This whole thing is also on this really plush area rug. And then this portion of the couch, these three, turn into a pull-out bed. I'm guessing it's a queen. And then, like I said, the bedding is in that closet that we already showed you. Here's your window. It has these shears. There are also light blocking curtains behind it that you can draw out. We don't have much of a view of anything. Parking lot, other buildings, no big deal. This is your living room TV. It does come with a DVD player and you are given a DVD now like swipe card to rent DVDs. And there's also this one more sitting chair and similarly teal themed piece of artwork. Then out this door is a patio. And it's not just a patio, it's a screened in patio. There's a screen here. I don't know if you can tell, but yeah, it's, you know, floor to ceiling, fully screened in. So enjoyable, honestly. So you have this table with four chairs. There's also a light and a ceiling fan out here so you can enjoy this at night. It's pretty large. It's probably one of the largest patios I've ever had at a hotel. Granted, this is probably one of the largest rooms I've ever had at a hotel. So yeah, there's your patio. Again, the view is nothing special. Might be from the other side of the building, but in 8601, just whatever. You can see a bit of SeaWorld way out there. There's like some tops of coasters that are SeaWorld. Let's go back inside. All right, coming back inside from the patio, again, we've got our living space, our dining space. Then this door is to the bedroom. So now we've got carpet throughout. Again, very plush and nice. It's a king bed. You have a TV with a wardrobe. It's got six pretty deep drawers. There's a little sitting bench here, which is super nice for putting on shoes or storing your things. We had a laptop here earlier. Piece of artwork. Again, you've got your sheer curtains with light blocking curtains underneath. Those work extremely well. And you can also access the patio from your bedroom, should you choose. Each person does get their own side table with this large deep drawer. And then just open space underneath. And while the lamps don't have outlets in them, the side 
of the nightstand table does. So this plug is being used by the clock, but there are two USB ports here. The bed I would say is pretty much standard, like double tree bed or Hilton Garden in bed. We've slept here for two nights and I find it comfortable, though not overly comfortable. It's not super firm, it's not soft, it's very in the middle. I think most people will do just fine with it. And same over here for the nightstand. Again, this outlet's being used, I think, for the phone, but there are these two USB ports for your use. Then looking across from the bed, you have this other area. I will say that these light blocking curtains block out the light very well in the morning. There's nothing you can do about light coming in from these windows though, so it will start to seep in. But we have just this huge bath and like awkwardly equally huge, I don't know, sitting area or place to store your things with these windows, with the shades you can open. Another piece of beautiful blue artwork. So yeah, bath basically in your bedroom. <laughs> fully visible if you want to be chilling. Across from the bath is another closet. This closet is where you'll have your safe as well as your luggage rack. And then there's just this little counter which I've taken over as my vanity. There's not a chair, which is a little bit of a bummer, but it does have a well-lit mirror. So yeah, someone can be in the bathroom while someone else is out here getting ready. And there is this pocket door. Ours is particularly a little sticky in this room, but let's open it up. And then you're back to the bathroom. So if you leave those open, this pocket door, this door to the bathroom from the main entryway and kitchen, and then the door into the bedroom, it's a full loop. If you don't mind sharing space with whoever you're staying with, it's very convenient to just kind of leave those all open. We booked this room for about $520 for three nights through a mouse savers promotion. Then on top of that, we have an additional $250 in savings through our Hilton Honors American Express Aspire credit card. This Hilton Grand Vacation Club SeaWorld does count as a resort according to Hilton, so we will be able to apply our $250 yearly allotment to the room rate. Even at $530 or so for all of this space that you get, I do think that's pretty reasonable for three nights. But especially for us, being able to take $250 off that rate makes this a huge steal. We absolutely could not pass it up. I find the space itself to be quite comfortable. The bed is a little firmer than I would prefer, but I do like my beds much on the softer side than most people. So like I said, I think it's a pretty middle of the road bed and most people will do fine. Having an ice maker in your room is awesome. All of the space to spread out is great. You know, an actual real dining table as well as a really big coffee table, then you still have your king bed, your bedroom. Plus the walk-in shower and the big bathtub. There's very little missing from this space in my opinion. Parking here is free, and if you are going to use this as a hub to do things around the Orlando area, I highly suggest you rent a car or bring your own car. While we've been staying here, we've pretty much just been heading up to Universal. That's about a 15 to 25 minute drive, depending on traffic. And that drive is to parking at City Walk, then you still do have to get out of your car and make your way through security to actually get into City Walk, then to the parks. If your vacation will be centered around SeaWorld, then this absolutely is a great location. But yeah, if you're going to be going from here to Disney, to Universal, to other parts of Florida, it will be a little bit of a drive. We've been out and about a lot, so we really haven't experienced the amenities here at the Hilton outside of our room. There are a couple pools. I popped into a marketplace that looked nice and cute, and there's a restaurant. Additionally, we are in the Warwick building, which is a little bit of a ways away from the main building with all the amenities. We weren't planning on using the amenities, so it doesn't bother us at all, but you may want to think about what building you would ask for during check-in if you do want to be nearby that main building. It's also worth noting that Hilton Grand Vacations Club is their timeshare. I saw some negative reviews online about this specific hotel, as well as some of the other Hilton Grand Vacation hotels in the area, particularly on the push to get you to buy into the timeshare. Everyone's experience is going to be different, but for me, it really wasn't a big deal at all. When we arrived, I did the check-in process at the front desk, and then they sent me to the concierge desk to pick up my parking hanging tag for our car. Then at concierge, the person I was speaking to who was helping me out with parking just asked, hey, what are you up to tomorrow? And I said, oh, we've got a busy day planned at the parks. She simply replied, oh, if you're interested in learning more about the resort, we have some time set aside tomorrow. And I said, no, sorry, you know, we're really busy. And she said, yeah, no problem. That was the extent of the timeshare pitch, at least for me. I am pretty introverted and I've listened to timeshare pitches on the phone before. I find it kind of hard to get off the phone. It's hard for me to set a hard no and just kind of walk away. This was really no pressure, like such an easy interaction. I'm really glad to report I didn't have any problems. Of course, it will vary on who you're talking to probably, but it definitely wasn't a hard sell in my experience. 
Overall, if you're looking for larger accommodations at a pretty reasonable price, I would definitely consider this hotel. For just my partner and I, I don't know that we need to come back. I'm not planning on making this our home base or anything, but I absolutely would stay here again if the price was right. For me, really the main downside is location. It's just not super conveniently located to either Universal or Disney, which is pretty much what we're doing when we're down in the Orlando area. But if you're gonna be bouncing around a lot of Orlando and you don't mind the drive, it's a pretty decent central location in my opinion. If you're not all that far from Universal, you're not all that far from Disney, you're just not right at either one. I hope this has been helpful. If you have any questions about our stay, leave those in the comments down below and I'll do my best to get back to you. And thanks so much to everyone who has liked the video, subscribed to the channel, rang the bell icon to turn notifications on, and left a comment down below. Your interactions with the channel are super appreciated. May the rest of your day be magical, and we'll see you real soon at Pixie Dust PhD.